Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Haley of Mock Child Cosplay, and today we're going to be working on remaking this corset neck thing for Magda. Um, this is made using a free pattern that I found online a couple of years ago. Um, I'll have a link to that in the description. I'm not sure if the link is working, but at the very least, I'll put a link to the website that I got it from. So the first step is I'm actually cannibalizing my old neck corset because I did make some modifications to that pattern when I first made it. So I don't wanna to have to go through all of those steps and instead I can just rip apart the old one and reuse those pieces. Um, so I had to start with removing the eyelets and then taking off that lining that I installed previously. Since this is a structured piece, I did add boning when I first made it. So I also needed to make sure that I took all of that out. And I set those pieces to the side just to see if I could maybe repurpose them or reuse them. I ended up only being able to reuse a couple of those pieces. Um, which saved me a little bit of boning. I actually ended up having literally just enough boning. Um, because I didn't have a structured pattern piece, I went ahead and marked and numbered my own pattern pieces for this garment and then really began the process of ripping apart the lining. I actually kept the main structure, like the external part of the garment um, together, just so I could kind of reference it and then took apart only the lining. Um, numbers are super handy for me. I try to number everything in consecutive order because it just helps me keep track of like what pattern and where the pieces go and how everything lines up. Uh, since I've done this pattern before, I was pretty familiar with all the different shapes of the pieces, but it never ever hurts to go ahead and renumber or reorganize everything because now you might not remember what past you thought you might remember. So part of the reason that I remade this neck corset was because it just didn't sit exactly where I wanted it to. Um, there were some parts of my costume, mainly the bottom of the headpiece that I really just wanted to cover. And it was hanging below the neck corset a little bit too far for my liking. So when I traced my pieces onto my new fashion fabric, I actually extended everything by about two inches and the side seams by about three inches. Um, the fabric that I'm using actually, fun fact, is not the same fabric that I use for some other parts on this costume. This is actually a fabric that I had bought initially for this costume and then set aside because I was like, you know what? This isn't quite what I'm looking for. Um, always hold on to your fabric though. Always store it. Always keep all of your stuff that you order for a project with that project because you never really know when it's going to come in handy like this fabric did today. Otherwise, I would have had to have gone and searched for the original fabric that I ended up using for a lot of the costume. And, you know, it, it just it's so handy to just have something on hand versus uh, having to reorder for something online and having to wait Lord knows how long for shipping to come through. The lining that I used was pretty much the exact same lining that I used for the original neck corset. Like I said before, I hold on to all of my fabrics. I'm kind of a hoarder. Um, when I was doing the lining pieces, I just took the individual pieces of the fashion fabric and laid them over top, weighed them down, and then carefully cut around them. Um, when it comes to things like this, if it's like two slippery fabrics on top of each other, I personally am a fan of just taking one of your pattern pieces, if you're like trying to trace it, and only using one to cut around. Sometimes if you put two pattern pieces on top of each other like that, and then try to cut that new design out of your lining fabric or whatever slinky fabric you're working with, they can kind of shift around and then you're actually accidentally cutting a little bit larger than the original pattern piece. And it can make things just not really line up right. Oh, one other thing of note, if you noticed, whenever I cut out the pieces, I grab the other piece that corresponds with the piece that I cut out. Then I layer them in the same way and put them in a spot for safekeeping. Um, I don't really talk about it ever a whole lot because it's such a minor thing that to me is like a default setting in my brain. But whenever you're working with a large pattern, and by large, I just mean one that has a lot of pieces um, and they can kind of get weird or wonky, Always arrange your pieces in like a consecutive order and in the same way every single time. It'll make it so much easier for you to reference and go, oh, that's this piece right here and this goes here.
Whenever I have a garment like this or a corset or anything else that just has a bunch of little pieces, I prefer to sit down and pin everything together before taking it over to my sewing machine. That way I can just kind of blow through everything in one sitting instead of having to sit down at the sewing machine, stand up, pin the next seam, sit down, stand up, pin the next seam, etc. It's a tiny thing, but it does help to save time and make things a little bit more efficient for you. This garment has a seam allowance of 5 eighths of an inch. I cannot tell you how many takes I had to do to be able to say that correctly. My brain wanted to say 5 eighths of a millimeter and that is not right. That sounds awful to sew with. I don't even want to think about that idea. Anyway, I stitched together my lining and my fashion fabric at the same time because like I said, I already knew this pattern and how it worked and that it was going to fit me relatively well. I didn't feel the need to make a mock-up. I just kind of ran with it. Whenever you're working on a garment or a project that has a lot of really, really curvy seams, and if you work on them a lot, I totally recommend getting a tailoring ham, which is what this guy is. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually smell like ham. And fortunately, it's not made out of pig. But regardless, it's a great thing to keep in your craft room and to store with you. Um, I'm using this one right here to press open my seam so that way I can start pinning down my binding that I'm going to use for my boning chandles. Uh, typically you might see, I, I, it's not even typically, it's totally optional. There are so many different ways to make corsets. Um, people will sometimes take their seam allowance, iron it open and sew two channels um, on either side of the seam. So that way they get, you know, two pieces of bone per seam. I personally just like putting down twill tape and stitching on either side and then inserting my boning. So I said that I didn't do a mock-up because I already had a great idea of how this was going to fit, but once I had the bones in, I couldn't resist myself and I had to put it on just to verify that everything looked and felt good. Fortunately, it did. Nothing to fix or change. With the fit of my pieces confirmed, I felt comfortable enough to start adding all of my piping. Um, I was actually a little bit torn on the original piece. I had done just piping along the edges. On a lot of other parts of this costume, I had done piping paired with bias tape. Um, I wanted to just kind of keep it simple and just get a move on. So I just went ahead and stuck with only piping to finish out these edges. After I had the piping sewn on, I then went through and carefully added in the lining. Um, this was sewn in in part on the machine and then everything was finished out by hand because that is just how you have to do it sometimes. With the lighting installed, it was finally time to add on my ruff. Fortunately, I cannibalized this from my previous neck piece. Um, this is just some, I think it's called Venetian lace. That's the unfortunate part about like teaching yourself how to sew is that you don't actually know how anything is pronounced. So I'm sorry if I'm saying the wrong thing, you're using the wrong term. Um, but because this lace had a really consistent pattern and it was like pretty much the exact height that I needed, I was able to pretty much fold the lace up and just do like a big running stitch through. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you're using just standard cotton or anything else for a rough, you're going to have to mark out literally where you want each fold. After the rough was situated, I then had to spend some time sort of finagling it, ensuring that it would fit on the neck piece that I had made and zhuzhing all of the ruffles to make sure that they laid relatively evenly. Um, I did this by pinning mainly the two front parts and then I kind of found the center ruffle and then pinned that to the center seam at the top of the neck piece. That way I kind of had a feeling for exactly the kind of volume that we needed on each side. Um, I'm sure it's a little bit off, but that's, you know, just how it's gonna be sometimes.
Sewing the ruffle on was pretty, pretty simple. I pretty much just very carefully whip stitched it on. I used the white thread for the top of the ruffle, just so that way you wouldn't see anything sticking out super far. And I really made sure to secure the start um, and the ends of my lace. From there, I just wanted to secure every single individual ruffle. I did leave that running stitch that I used to gather everything down in my ruffle, just in case uh, anything else happened. But in the event that that snaps or breaks, I am a big fan of like double or triple reinforcement. So each little ruffle got stitched down. And I did that for both the bottom and the top. With the ruff installed and the lining put in, the only parts that were left were the hook and eye closures. I actually have two hook and eye closures in there now, and it's not shown in the video, but this piece also features two snaps at the center, I'm sorry, not the center front, but towards the front of the piece that snaps it to the collar for the hood, just to help make sure that everything does stay tucked away and hidden. Um, also, I'm really lazy when it comes to sewing hook and eyes, so please don't look at my work and be like, oh, you didn't do whatever hell of a stitch. Like, I just want to whip stitches on and then get out of there. Closures are the absolute bane of my existence. And then finally, I got to actually try this on with the headpiece. There are some things that I'm not like a hundred percent satisfied with, um, but it's super, super minor. And I think end of the day, this looks pretty nice, you know? I might add a couple of more bones to the front panels there where there's a little bit of wrinkling, but that aside, Hell yeah.